We've got a potent winter storm kicking off right now, about to impact a large chunk of the United States. In this video, I've got details on everything, so let's get right into it right here at One Nation Weather. Thank you so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get me to that 3,000 subscriber goal so I can give you those consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts. Using Weather Bell maps like this one, you can get these um, with a free trial in the description. Um, but let's get right into this here with your pattern um, overview as we've got rainfall, some flood concerns here from parts of Arkansas and Louisiana all the way on over to the Appalachians, southern Appalachians, I should say here, um, as we go through our late Saturday evening into our Sunday um, early morning. We've also got snow up here exiting the four corners, higher elevation elevations and some showers and storms that we'll watch progress through parts of Texas um, and into the Arklatex region that I'll tell you in more detail about here in a moment. Um, we'll also have, as we go through our Sunday, say around midday, Euro model painting a picture of some snowfall there into western Texas. Now as this event moves on, the snowfall is a little bit uncertain. Um, it looks like with the Euro model it kind of dissipates that snow before returning it over parts of Missouri. Also watching showers and storms over here over Alabama, Georgia, and the Florida Panhandle. And then as the slow continues moving eastward and heading northeast, we'll be watching the rainfall and the storms through, say, our Monday here over parts of Alabama, Georgia, um, and the Carolinas and the Florida Panhandle, while snowfall will get kicking up here late Monday and into our Monday night and into a Tuesday here, where some heavy snowfall could impact parts of Ohio, um, eastern Ohio at that, um, parts of West Virginia, but especially on over there into southern New England, as well as New York, um, into Pennsylvania, and could this include major metros like New York City and Boston? Yes. Yes, but skip to around seven minutes into this video to get the details on the snowfall. I've got your severe weather outlook here as I'm filming this for your Saturday night. We've got a slight risk for severe weather from San Angelo, Texas, all the way on over to Waco and Austin, and that does include this hail risk, which is hatched, which means that we you see those hatched um, those hatched dash marks there into parts of the Edwards Plateau of Texas region. This is where we're watching the potential for some two to four inch hailstones overnight tonight. Um, of course, again, as I film this video, very heavy rainfall stretch from northern Louisiana all the way on over there into the southern Appalachians. This will be a flooding concern there, especially through Arkansas, northern Louisiana, northern Mississippi, and on over there into Tennessee as well um, through this evening and into the midnight and even overnight hours as that complex continues there. We've got a new low that's going to eject out here into the Texas and Oklahoma Panhandle. Again, that's what's responsible for that slight severe weather risk further south here, especially along that I-10 corridor um, heading from places like Fort Stockton all the way on over here to Austin in Texas. Now, again, here's what we're looking at as we head towards, say, midnight, 1 a.m. tonight, riding that I-10 corridor there, um, again, just east of Fort Stockton. We'll be watching those storms again, two to four inch hailstones possible. This is devastating hail, so make sure if you have like a garage, a carport, any of that, um, that you can get those vehicles under there because I guarantee you there will be some hail damage through this region tonight um, from Abilene all the way on down there, um, closer to San Antonio as the night goes on. A Abilene getting impacted by the northern edge of those storms wouldn't rule out some unrulier cells there, say 2, 3 a.m. tonight though. Um, again, the heavy, heavier end of this rainfall is going to be up there closer to Dallas, probably sub-severe though as that rain tries to kind of feed its on back towards the actual low pressure system, um, but we'll watch those cells in Dallas and especially what goes on here through Austin as we head overnight tonight and towards 6, 7 a.m. on our Sunday morning. We're also questioning the potential and not ruling out the potential that we could get some brief supercells out of these storms as well, so some spin-up tornadoes not out of the question there. Not only they're closer to San Antonio, um, but throughout this line as it heads eastward tonight. Now, your severe weather outlook as we make our way into our Sunday, it's a level 2 threat there from parts of eastern Texas around the Houston and Tyler area, um, through Shreveport, Louisiana, Lake Charles, and New Orleans, then on over there through south central Mississippi and southwestern Alabama, and this does include that 2 to 5 percent tornado risk, so we do have that slight tornado risk here through central Louisiana, and especially into south central parts of Mississippi is where we're watching just enough wind shear, but especially the moisture and the storm energy leveling on up with this system. Um, we just don't really have all all the ingredients to make this a tornado outbreak necessarily. But let me show you how this plays out. In the morning, tomorrow morning, say 7, 8 o'clock through Dallas, um, Tyler, Texas, on down to College Station, again, watching the heavy rainfall. Some embedded still, some bigger hailstones possible there, especially near Tyler and College Station region there, um, south of that I-20 corridor as these storms continue progressing eastward through the morning. We'll continue to watch that through places like Texarkana, Shreveport, Louisiana, for some very heavy rainfall and maybe a brief flood threat nonetheless. It, all the way on up to Little Rock, some heavy rain out of that kind of leftover segment of some heavier storms as it heads eastward. We'll watch those storms. Overall, though, looking to just bring, you know, maybe a moderate wind threat um, that could likely, in most cases, be on the sub-severe side. Southern end of this line could trail some maybe tornado-producing cells here through parts of north-central Louisiana as well as parts of um, south-central 
um, Mississippi as it moves eastward. But I think it's really these cells that fire on off, say, 5, 6 o'clock Central Time on the back end of it um, through Central Louisiana and southern parts of Mississippi, maybe even eastern Texas as well that we'll be watching. So really all afternoon, be monitoring the potential for these discrete cells to pop on up there through the through the threat zone. Um, and then as we make our way, say, into our early Monday morning, look at this, some storms now firing on up there through New Orleans and into southern parts of Mississippi, and some of those could be good for some damaging storms as well with a wind and tornado threat being the primary hazards. Because again, once you kind of get out of that colder air of the high plains there, you kind of lose the hail threat as this moves eastward. And what I mean by cold air is colder air in the upper levels. Um, now here we go on over to your severe weather outlook for our Monday. Yep, it continues. We've got a slight risk level 2 out of 5 through parts of um, Montgomery there in Alabama on down into Dothan through the Panhandle of Florida, through South Central Georgia, but all the way on up to Atlanta, Georgia, um, as well um, as close to the South Carolina coastline. Um, so we'll be watching those cells there for another wind and tornado threat. But here's what we're looking at in terms of total precipitation out of everything that we get. Um, the total is looking to add on up towards close to the 2 to 4 inch margin there as we go through parts of northern Louisiana on over into eastern Tennessee as we make our way just through our Sunday evening. Some heavier totals along the Red River Valley there in north central Texas and into Oklahoma as well. Um, and then as we kind of shift things on over towards the east to look at how these totals add up through the southeast. Again, look at these totals all the way on over there into parts of Nashville, maybe an inch or two of rain. Um, eastern parts of Tennessee through Knoxville, two to four inches of rain. Western Carolinas, two to four inches of rain. Through Atlanta, Georgia, two to four inches. So a pretty considerable amount of rainfall adding up with round after round of rainfall. Um, and of course, out ahead of that main storm system, um, we will be getting those shots of rain across, especially that red shaded area. And that's why we get the flood threat there. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to ONW Beyond for occasional extra updates as well. Um, the link to that should be popping up on your screen right now um, in the top right-hand corner for mobile users. Now, in terms of our winter weather threat out of the upcoming system, we do have a um, winter storm warning issued here over northeastern New Mexico through parts of eastern Colorado and some zones in the pink shaded counties, um, as well as into the Texas Panhandle. We've also got winter weather advisories extending eastward from there into northern Arkansas, and then winter storm watches popping up now in the north. East. Let's look at the system evolution out of the two different computer models that we tend to focus on. The Euro model bringing the heavier snowfall here into eastern New Mexico as well as into the northern um, parts of the Texas Panhandle. Notice as this low tries to kind of gather itself together, regain that strength, we kind of miss out on snowfall there through Oklahoma City and into the Ozarks region there of Arkansas. So that's why it remains a winter weather advisory there for now. The Euro doesn't really pick up the snowfall again until this makes its way at least a little bit through south central Illinois south central parts of indiana as well as through central ohio and of course the big winners are going to be up there in the northeastern united states where by the time we go late monday night and into our tuesday morning that is some really heavy snow there will be some gusty winds as well through this region of ohio pennsylvania um, but especially on over there into southern new york i um, mean then notice how as we go through our tuesday afternoon the snow just continues pummeling parts of the southern new england especially in the boston area through um, massachusetts southern vermont and new hampshire as well even the coastline of Maine getting in on some pretty heavy snowfall rates. So this is going to be good for some pretty decent accumulation, um, and it would be good for even more um, if this were falling, you know, kind of with higher ratios. But this is a wetter snowfall, so to speak. Um, now let's look at the GFS model and how it plays this out. Notice the difference between the GFS and the Euro here. Through the northern Texas panhandle and even on over into Oklahoma City, it n notes that there will be a very heavy band of snow moving through, um, and that continues heading eastward through parts of south Southeast Kansas, through central Missouri, southern Illinois, Indiana, into Ohio as well. Um, so this whole stripe I'm circling right now would be good for some heavier totals, which the um, Euro doesn't agree on quite as much. What both models are beginning to come into overall consensus on is actually what's a little further out um, in that there will be extremely heavy snowfall rates at times um, and maybe some blinding kind of whiteout conditions on the roadways here over parts of the southern New England into parts of, say, um, in New York, southern Vermont, New Hampshire, into Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. So kind of some familiar areas there um, with both models. Now here's your forecast snowfall out of the inch individual models. Eastern New Mexico and the you know West Texas Panhandle region winning out with two to four inch plus totals. Some of those pinks indicating closer to ten inches there um, into West Texas. The Euro also indicating maybe some brief splotches of one to three inches into South Central Oklahoma. 
southern Missouri and far northwestern Arkansas as well, picking up on some, you know, one to three inch modest totals, maybe locally higher amounts of snowfall in the 10 to 1 ratio here that we're looking at. Um, and again, notice how as this system treks east, it's a very narrow band of snowfall. It's subject to change, but it does show southeast Illinois, southern parts of Indiana, on over there through far northern Kentucky and southwestern Ohio, getting in on the heaviest snowfall with totals maybe, say, four to six inches at the decent, you know, at the higher end, especially there. Um, and then look where the big winners are. I mean, you can see that pink stripe as that low is going to be trekking just south of Long Island. This entire swath of northern Pennsylvania through Scranton, PA, southern um, in New York and the Poughkeepsie area. They're on over to Boston, Worcester, and Massachusetts, as well as the Portland, Maine area. Foot plus totals not out of the question in that stretch, according to the Euro. Whereas the GFS over the south central, first of all, look, it brings a swath of up to a foot and a half of snow through parts of central parts of o Oklahoma there. I think that's a little bit overdone for sure, um, but you can't rule anything out, so we'll watch that closely as well as those heavier totals that the GFS indicates through central parts of Missouri. Again, I would trust the Euro model more though at this point. As again, you notice just how widespread it even shows those 6 to 12 inch totals as this moves through the Ohio Valley. There hasn't really been a model even doing that that much recently. Uh, so again, I think these are overdone snow totals. Um, but where you see the agreement with the Euro model is in that southern New England zone. Euro model brought this a little bit further north, maybe not quite as far north as I was just circling just now. But anyway, you kind of get the point. Um, northern Pennsylvania, south central New York, especially just north of the New York City, Long Island region. That's where this heaviest snow will be. Long Island picking up at least a few inches of snow as it looks right now. And here's the model blend snowfall. Heavier pockets there of the snowfall, two to four inches plus um, in, this, in all these zones I'm circling. Um, and again, notice it's not quite as bullish on a big snow stripe through Illinois, um, Indiana, and Ohio, especially at this point. We'll also watch that snowfall, though, into southern New England where the model blend is already picked picking up that probably 6 to 12 inches of snow will fall there in south central New York, northeastern Pennsylvania, and then on over in another zone there near Boston. Um, so that looks to be the big zone that wins. We'll also be watching some snowfall that will impact parts of the Cascades and into the mountains of Idaho and Montana here as we head later down the stretch as well. One last thing I kind of want to take a look at before we look at temperatures and then close the video, forecast wind gusts here. We've got the winds picking up this afternoon and into the overnight hours here of our Saturday and into our Sunday over parts of the south central plains. These gusts will increase as we go through our Sunday, some gusts um, through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, um, and on over there into um, Arkansas, 20, 30 miles per hour. Um, overall, though, not too much in the way of extreme wind expected out of this system. But you can see as the storm heads eastward, it does begin to strengthen. So by Monday at 4 p.m., We've got a large swath of gusts, you know, maybe 20, 30 miles per hour over the circled area. Again, the key is at the top of your screen in miles per hour up there, so keep that in mind. This is miles per hour. Um, some of those greens moving through the Carolinas and Virginia into our Tuesday morning, those are some 30, 40 mile per hour gusts. And then we'll also have some of those skirting along here with the wraparound flow of that low up there into southern New England, um, especially closer to coastal areas. Some gusts picking up closer to 50 miles per hour at the high end there, especially around Cape Cod. So we'll be watching that inside of this storm as well. And of course, last thing, temperatures. Out ahead of this, we've got 60s and 70s up here into South Texas and on over towards the Carolinas and Florida into our Sunday afternoon. But look at that over there into the Texas panhandle. You know, we're sitting near 30 degrees. So there's a big temperature gradient over Texas, especially on our Sunday. By the time we go into Monday, that gradient shifts eastward. And we've got now 40s and 50s by the afternoon hours here over parts of the South Central, while we've still got 60s to near 70 in the Georgia, the Carolinas, Florida, where that severe risk will be on Monday. Um, and then kind of behind this we see everything kind of crashing on over wow um, we just got through the last part of that video pretty quickly there um, please hit that subscribe button again to help me get towards that 3,000 subscriber goal um, weatherball maps free trial in the description that's it for this one stay safe out there everyone